Welcome to the No Guilt Fangirls Podcast, where liking what you like is never a bad thing. Here's your host and head fangirl in charge, Patty Holiday. Welcome to the No Guilt Fangirls Podcast. I'm your host and head fangirl in charge, Patty Holiday. Now we are recapping and discussing the final season six, Shit's Creek, uh, right after we watched it. And well, the next morning after we watched it, because last night, episode number four aired, and this one is called Maid of Honor. And we've got to talk about it. We just have to talk about this one. <laughs> uh, back with me, as always, is Jamie. If you've listened to any of the other Shit's Creek fangirling episodes, there was a big one from the summer, and then there's been these recaps so far. Jamie's been down with all of it, and she gets the, like major credit for basically influencing me enough to sit down and watch this show. So thank you, Jamie. <laughs> Anytime. I'm glad to help. <laughs> My life has been forever changed. <laughs> I know that is right. You you know it. Yeah, you know you know what this the show means. She is one of the biggest Shits Creek fans that I know, and I won't lie, I wanted a chance to talk with her a little more frequently anyway, so that's why I create podcasts. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing, Jamie? I'm doing great. I'm just uh, trying to figure out how to start a letter writing campaign to the Oscars to see if we can get the new Curls Have Eyes trailer included in this year's ceremony. And this, I, I think that would be completely accurate as what we saw. <laughs> it's clear. That's where we need to go with this. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, by the way, guys, this is a 100% spoiler episode so you know we're going to talk about it all uh quotes and moments and plot lines all of that is fair game so if you have not watched it yet if you're waiting i totally get that uh if you are wondering how you can watch it i actually have a a a post that's going to help you out with that and i'm going to go ahead and link it in show notes for you but um that might help you find your best way to watch schitt's creek so you can join in this discussion with us every week. All right, so that was your warning. If this isn't for you, bop on out. I totally get that. Okay, Jamie, first of all, can you give us a recap of last night's episode? This episode was called Maid of Honor, and I, I, spoiler alert, everybody, I love this one. This one got me back super happy. I did too. Um, I really, I, we had a lot of laughs on this one. So um, last night we, the big news is the trailer came out for The Crows Have Eyes 3, The Crow Winning. And that kind of took over everybody's world and got us laughs right out of the gate with them trying to watch through the buffering and everything else. Um, and then also we had, we're moving forward with David and Patrick's wedding plans, which um, again, a just more awkwardness with Alexis because she wasn't supposed to be here. So now we're having maid of honor awkwardness. Uh, we are also seeing Stevie kind of wondering what she's doing. As she said, she has now uh, left two jobs in a week and she's in her thirties. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other big story that we're seeing is the guys, Roland and Johnny, at their new motel, going to check out how classy it is, and they think they find a squatter. And so they're kind of playing detective and trying to figure out what's going on there. So lots of different cute little storylines going on in this one, but it was really good. Yeah, it was. It was because, you know, last week we we were admitting how uh, as much as we are enjoying it, we didn't love it yet. Like it just, it, it's it's good. It's fine. But, you know, it didn't have the charm or whatever we were looking for. I felt like there were moments in this show where I was just like, that, that's what I want to see more of. That's new. That's what I need. And uh, most of that, I think, was because it was a lot of David and Alexis together. Yes. And my husband kind of tuned in at the end. He didn't see the whole show this time, and he was asking certain questions. And I was like, I think this talks about their relationship and what it's always been like, not what it's just been like at Schitt's Creek, but their entire lives. Kind of David and Alexis were on their own, let's be honest. Uh, Johnny and Mara love their kids, but they were not attentive parents. <laughs> yeah, and I think that um like you said their relationship it's always kind of been David and Alexis, but I think that 
as they've kind of learned to grow as humans and recognize what it is to love other people as they've, you know, started their own relationships, it's kind of helped them realize what they have in each other. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. No, I've, I've been I've been loving it. And it's been uh, this this episode was was super sweet. So uh, what what were your favorite moments from the episode? I think a lot of my favorites were Alexa centric this week. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, sh she's just so great anyway. But her, Annie her Francis is amazing. National treasure. She has the comedic timing and the inflections and that I, uh, I just want to hang out with her because I think she probably comes up with some really hilarious stuff on the fly too. Yeah. Like I wonder, um, so she had a kind of throwaway line as she was leaving the room saying that Diplo still sends her nudes and she gave <laughs> a really funny face. And I'm like, you know, I wonder if she ad-libbed that, you it know, hilarious because <laughs> her delivery just couldn't have been better on that. Well, and I also I also love the follow up to that is David having to explain who Diplo is under his right. breath, very casually, like he's getting used to any time he has to explain his family to to Patrick, yeah. and like this is just another one of those moments where I need to tell you who this guy was, and Patrick's just like okay. <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> i'm not sure that anything is surprising patrick anymore at this time <laughs> yeah all he can say is okay and just keep moving <laughs> so yeah i think i think my favorite was when they were in the tuxedo shop and alexis kind of you know she's been building up to try to take back over maid of honor duties and she realizes that stevie really is struggling right now and so she Let's roll that okay. back first. Let's go to where Stevie uh, gets in. So we know exactly why this moment is so important. So okay. they go and they pick up Stevie to go to the tuxedo shop. And there's a whole discussion before that about how now that Alexis is going to be in town, of course she's going to be David's maid of honor because that's how he always envisioned it uh, because he has some, uh, uh, what what was it, his wedding journal or something? A, that dream, she a dream book. Dream book, dream book. And she, she was, Alexis was flipping through it and calling out all this stuff. And it was really funny and really cute. And basically, David's been planning for this day for his entire life. And Alexis knows how big of a deal this is. And so, of course, she needs to be a maid of honor. And he admits that he thought she was going to be gone. So he had already asked Stevie to do it. And she's like, I will take care of this. I will basically talk Stevie into giving me the job because she's helping me out. It'll be fine. Like Stevie won't even know what hit her. Right. I did want to say, though, that there was a really funny line in there when she's like, who did you ask? Ronnie? <laughs> <laughs> and they keep going back to no, 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 no. Ronnie doesn't like Patrick, <laughs> which I love so so much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, that was so funny. So Stevie gets in the car. They pick her up, for, and she's in full like flight attendant gear. They pick her up from Larry Air, and she's like, "Go, go, go! Hurry, hurry, hurry!" Like, she wants out of there. She wants out of there. It's so obvious that she wants out of there. I don't think I caught right away that she had actually quit, and that's why she was running out. I thought she was just freaking out. Yeah, but, I did too. Yeah, but as the course of the conversation, she she confesses. She she gets in the car and she kind of just like word vomits everywhere, and she confesses how she quit this job because they were going to put her on an airplane like this week, and she has no training, and how scary as that and I can't be the one in charge of people if I'm not even trained for this and so she makes a, a good a good choice potentially right. <laughs> we right. all appreciate <laughs> even Larry is suing Larry Air yes yes <laughs> which is what <laughs> <laughs> um, so she gets in the car and she basically you can see Everything is not going to go as smoothly as Alexis originally thought. She still has it and she keeps like kind of reminding David, hey, I've got this. I'm going to take care of Stevie. You just, you know, be the bride up there. And um, <laughs> and so they get to the tuxedo shop and it's here at the tuxedo shop where really kind of Alexis is going full press and she's kind of making her case in, in a very subtle, passive aggressive Alexis way. But something that it's obvious that Stevie can pick up on that okay, Alexis is much better suited for this role and this job for David than I am. But that does come with that 
minor breakdown that Stevie has. Poor Stevie. I know. Uh, And you could see that she just wanted to do the best thing for David. Um, But she felt completely overwhelmed. And I think she's just feeling completely overwhelmed with life right now. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Been there, done that, girl. Uh, And and I know in the past we have both said we just weren't quite feeling Stevie yet. How do you feel at this point? I think that, you know, last night, the way they really wrote her playing everything out, I really felt for her. You know, I, I really felt more of a connection with her. Cause like you said, when have we all not felt, where are we going? What Absolutely. am I doing? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. This one was the first really true, I don't know. They just, it was really well written. Like you said, and well portrayed. She did a great job mm-hmm. kind of getting that across that she just doesn't know what to do with her life. And she thought it was one thing and it wasn't that she thought it was something else and it wasn't that. And here she is. Uh, two jobs in one week she left your dad i mean you know she was had all these feelings that she finally is expressing how she admits i left your dad high and dry like who am i to have just done that to him and um so she does she she's she she came around for me a little bit i was like all right stevie i see you i understand we we got some we got some issues going on little mid, mini midlife crisis happening right now you're not even midlife yet <laughs> This was also my favorite part of the whole episode was David is kind of casually watching and he's being the observer and his facial expressions, as always, just amazing, that he is watching what's going down between Alexis and Stevie. I honestly think that if she had taken Stevie up when Stevie finally says, Alexis, maybe you're better at this, maybe you should do this. And if she had taken that moment and jumped on it, I think Stevie would have been okay in the moment. Eventually, she might have been saddened about it, but I think at the moment, she might have even felt a little relief. I don't know. However, it just shows how much and how far Alexis has come when she stood up and she was like, I am not letting you quit on another job today. You've got this. I will help you. We'll make this happen. But you've got this. You've got this maid of honor thing down. And that if you can freeze frame it and whenever you go back and watch the show, which I know you will like six more times, uh, <laughs> I just watched the th- the second time I watched it through. I just watched David's reaction while all this was going down and uh, it was amazing. That's what makes this show for me is sometimes it's just the reaction and what's going on in the backgrounds with people. And this one, I loved it. I loved it. Yeah. The subtle nuances of this show are just amazing. Mm-hmm. You know, and and I kind of did the same thing. I watched David in the background just kind of watching this whole thing. And I would imagine part of him's going, uh, I don't really, you know, he's got these two women he loves more than mm-hmm. anything. And he doesn't want anyone to get hurt. And yeah, that has kind of a tough situation. Oh, it definitely was. But um, he was, he was, I think he was trying to step back and let it be handled. And then... If he had a step, you know, I, he would have done the right thing. I know he would have done the right thing. But at the same time, I felt like he was okay with the way things were going down. I didn't, I didn't see any distress on his face from a truly like, I need to stop Alexis point of view. Yeah. And I, I felt like he was kind of stepping back and watching his sister and kind of realizing watching that he had seen her grow. Yes, yeah. yes. Like she has this. Look at look at yeah. what she's done. Yeah. So in the end, uh, he goes back to Alexis and he comes up with another job for her, which I thought was so sweet. And this was what when my husband chimed in, he was like, "Wait, why did he do that?" He asks Alexis to walk him down the aisle. Yeah, I really love that. I did not see that coming Mm-mm, at me all. Me neither. Me neither. I really thought he was going to ask her to like officiate the wedding. Which would have been amazing. Would have been amazing. Now that you said that, I'm like, can we go back? (laughs) Right. I'll just call Dan Levy real quick and ask him. (laughs) Quick edit to your show, Dan. You don't mind, do you? But yeah, that would have been amazing. (laughs) (laughs) And who knows? Maybe it'll happen. We don't. We don't. With this show, we never know what's coming up. But yeah, I thought that was a really touching. It was a touching moment. And then one of the things the best I, I love best about this show is it was a really touching sweet moment immediately followed by well what if I was the flower girl and had my dress made all out of flowers (laughs) you know we have a touching moment and then we go back to completely ridiculous 
Oh, completely, completely. Yeah, no, it was so good. It was so good. The other thing that I I, I liked, I liked the interaction with the Jazza girls and Twyla and Moira uh, and uh, Jocelyn watching the trailer. First of all, guys, if you haven't seen the trailer, the trailer actually exists and you can find it. Uh, I'm sure it's on YouTube, but I found it on Twitter because um, they tweeted it out and it was all I ever wanted. <laughs> From the groaning, <laughs> um, it's uh, it's ridiculous. And uh, what I loved was, you know, poor Jocelyn is just like, that's a real movie. Like that's her that's her review. <laughs> yeah. Yes, and as Moira says, put that on the Sizzler reel. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's a real movie. As you can tell, Jocelyn's not, she wants to support her friend, but at the same time, she doesn't get the movie. She doesn't get the show. She's not sure, like, what's happening or what's going on here. And uh, I thought that was an interesting way to do it, but what I liked the most, again, was how Moira takes offense, and if su- at first you assume that it's just because Moira's being Moira. Of course, she wants everybody to fawn over her and whatever. But subtly, they come to the realization that Jocelyn realizes that Moira really cares what she thinks, even if she won't say so much, say it, say it as much. But and she she kind of comes around to the and, she, and explains why she's not into the movie or why she wasn't and she gives her best you know high school teacher essay (laughs) about what she liked about this movie in the end to kind of make up with Moira and I think it was I like that one too I thought that was very sweet it was so sweet and she wrote such a beautiful review that had just such you know, beautiful words and, you know, really kind of painted a picture. And then immediately, once again, we have a very sweet moment that Jocelyn said she was scared of horror movies and she kind of overcame her fear because she realized her friend needed her. So we have this sweet, touching moment and then immediately followed by by Moira going, but what about my performance? (laughs) (laughs) Of course, uh, because it's always about Moira. It's always right. Moira. She's, <laughs> uh, she's a hot mess. Uh, so overall, overall, we ha- we had a little bit of, of everything in this one. We did get some Ron- Ronnie. We did get some Twyla. Uh, Twyla had, again, her crazy lines that they, they give her that just make me laugh. I will have those quotes up for you uh, later on this morning as well. And, uh, oh, Roland and Johnny. Now, this is the only side story right now that I'm like... What is happening here? Yeah. I don't know. I I think I liked it better when Roland and Johnny were a little bit more at odds together. While I like the idea of them having grown and they're now friends, there was a there was just a little more edge to it, you know. Yep. And I agree. We're not, yeah, you know, we're not getting that edge right now. So, and I don't think we will. I think now that they're business partners, that might have you know morphed into something else. Uh, but yeah, we'll have to see where this goes with them yeah and the only other thing so they you know just to quick quickly say they they found what they thought was a squatter in the motel you know they found a bag of cash and a gun and whatever and this guy they do a stakeout and roland delivers one of the funniest lines saying that he needs to get some of this generic orange drink because it's made of 99 percent drink um (laughs) (laughs) but they find a a bag full of cash and a gun and this guy like they stake him out and you know kind of go and confront him or whatever and he says he's a prosecutor which i I don't buy it all. My husband doesn't buy it all. But I'm like, we don't need to start new storylines here, guys. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. But I have to trust in the levies and, and trust that they'll bring it to a close. So Yeah. Something, something it'll, it'll work out. But I agree with you. I was kind of like, uh, this is confusing. And why are, why are we doing this again? And But I'm assuming there must be something someplace somewhere where this is going to matter because – they do things that matter in this show. Most things are not just throw away or not. Yeah, there's always a reason, right? There's always a reason. Right. So yep. we just got to hang in there and see what that is. Anything else? Anything you want to wrap up the show with? No, I just, I really, really love this episode. Um, of course, I'm already waiting for next week to see what that brings to us. But yeah, I really, as much as I didn't love the episode before, I'm, 
I'm back head over heels. I kind of felt like that was going to happen to us. Uh, <laughs> almost <laughs> like, um, almost like, you know, we, 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 this one was okay. This one was great. Bring you back down to earth and then we take you back up again. And, uh, I don't know. It's storytelling and I love it and I'm down for this. But yeah, there, there was definitely some some changes and some movement in the character's uh, progression towards the final end of the final season that you can kind of visualize. I still can't guess what they're going to end up with for Stevie. I still feel like she's kind of the the biggest question mark out there. I feel solid that we're going to get a wedding because there's no way that we're going to talk so much about this wedding and we're not going to get a wedding. If they do that to us, I will flip tables. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. (laughs) But yeah, we're going to get a wedding, right? hundred percent. Okay. hundred percent. I think it's not, it may not end up the pageantry and an obsession that, that David was kind of hinting at. I think we're going to go a little bit more low key, but we'll see. Exactly. Exactly. All right. All right. Well, thanks, Jamie. And we will be back next week with another episode. And uh, thanks for fangirling Shit's Creek with us again. Bye.